Hello everybody and thanks for joining me once again. So uh, what are we doing? Well this is uh, basically the lesson one in Motion Studio 3D and today I'm just going to get you started with just doing some very simple text animation. Now before we start uh, by default the settings on your preview window will be 480 by 640 now when you export that to Video Studio you'll have the two black bars on the left side and the right side so to, uh, to avoid that go into your projects and dimensions and then you are then you here you can change the width and height now I use 960 by 40, uh, 540 and that works quite well especially with widescreen and when you use it especially when you use 3D animation it doesn't put a lot of stress on your CPU, so rendering is a little bit easier. So that's just my advice, but uh, it's up to you, of course. All right, so uh, you've seen my first video at the intro. You understand now what the interface does. So let's get going. Let's uh, click on the text tool and create our text. So let's just do test again. Uh, and obviously, you can change the font style all here, whatever's. Uh, font you have in your font file folder on your computer well then it automatically picks it up like most softwares do and anyway, so there it is all right so here we are this is our work test and as you know these are the three icons that you can use to move rotate and resize i'm going to go to my resize and just make it slightly smaller now to keep the aspect ratio i hold down my shift key and then i just move it to wherever, whatever size i want Okay, so that looks that looks about good. Right, so the first thing you might want to do is change the color. So what you do is you go into your timeline, and there's all these tabs here, and this tab here, color. Just click on it once, and then the attribute panel opens up, and this will allow you to change the color. Let's change the color from uh, the uh, standard uh, orangey yellow looking color <laughs> uh, to white. I'm going to go for white, and uh, you know I'm going to. Brighten it up a bit so I'm going to add some light to it so it's nice and shiny. Okay, now um, you may wish to change the color uh, throughout the uh, the effect. So let's say you want to go to the first second. Here we go, second. Now, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the, uh, the default frame rate is 75 and 25 frames per second. So we're only going to work with a three second clip here, but that's okay because I'm just showing you how to use the text. Now I wish to go say from uh, uh, whatever white to uh, a blue text. So, so as you can see quickly that it's uh, it's no different to when I showed you picture in picture. It's all about keyframes. So when every time it moves along the timeline and you change anything it will create a keyframe. So uh, that's how it works. This program works on keyframes okay so we're going to go from this white to blue okay so that's how we change the color okay if you want to do to uh, delete the keyframe uh, watch what happens to my cursor it will turn into a hand click on it and then I just press delete on my keyboard and that just uh, brings it right back okay so that's how you can change and play with the color okay now I'll show you another cool little feature worth knowing if I uh, move my text, let's say I move it over here and uh, I, I've done a few things to it but I wish it to go back to the center. You know, I, obviously I can you know, try and do that sort of thing. I can also just punch in the keys in the XYZ000 but there's a shortcut and that's the uh, reset transform and that will bring it all back to the beginning and that includes your resize. But uh, if you have resized it and when you press reset uh, transforming you want it to go back only to the size that you had originally then you add uh, a fixed point so let's say so now if I move it and do this so I've made it smaller and moved it so I now go back to reset transform it goes back to the middle and to that previous size that I chose if uh, you really mess things up and you want to go right back to the beginning 
yeah, you can click undo a hundred times, but uh, there's another way. You just remove the last uh, fixed transform position, and that brings you right back to uh, the original default, which, which where you started. So that's worth knowing. That's just these three up here. That's kind of cool. Okay, well let's uh, let's do something different again. Let's add some texture to our test. So go to the texture tab. Now you're going to have some real cool fun with this. Uh, you're going to have a drop down window, and as you can see, you've got a, a lot of things you can do with it here. But uh, right now, what we can do is uh, a couple of things here. We can either uh, superimpose an image on here, or I can even impose a video file on here. So, like I say, if I press play, that is now inside that text. So that's uh, creating the texture. I can go to image. So I can go to image and I've got this bit of wood here. So now I've created a wood texture on my uh, my word. Okay. Now I can also do one better than that. If let's say uh, I don't want any of that, so I'll go back to the original. Uh, I can go into the uh, easy palette and also uh, grab some test text effects. So um, let's see um, image texture. So as you can see, they also come with a whole bunch of variety. So uh, let's go for brick. So now, as you can see, I changed it to brick. So now my fonts, uh, well, my word is in a brick formation. And uh, as you can see, this uh, has a lot of options. And uh, once you even applied the uh, texture on there, just remember it always will open up the. Uh, uh, your attribute and uh, so you can also then play with the uh, the width and thickness so as you can see I can do so much with it so every time you apply any effect or filter on here you can change all the settings within the attribute panel so keep that in mind now I can add uh, another object and I'm going to show you uh, I mentioned previously in the last tutorial what object manager means so let's add another text in here so I have two tests on top of each other. I'm just going to move it so you can clearly see it, and then I'm going to rotate that slightly. Okay. So now, how do I go from this test to that test? You know, if I uh, I can do that by just uh, highlighting my text tools. But uh, if I go to Object Manager, I can also just uh, do it this way. I click on the test that I want. So it's probably best to name one, <laughs> test one, test two. So how do you do that? Well, they're easy. I just double click on it and then I can just change it to uh, so I know which one I'm talking about and then enter. So now I've got a clear uh, d distinction between what test one and test two is. And then I can move it around. Now if I don't like test one, I can just remove it by just deleting it and then I'm back to the original work I had. So that's uh, pretty cool as well. Alright, so what else can we do? Well then, uh, let add, let's add some animation to it. Let me just change that so it's a little bit better than I chose. <laughs> now let's add some animation to it. So we can go to the uh, text effect. Uh, so we can do blast, which uh, which is my favorite, or bump, or dance. But let's just uh, do something. Let's grab jump. Uh, no, I'm going to do something simple so we can see what we're doing here. Um, yeah, you know, this one's fine. So you can do two things. You can click and drag and drop it or just double click. And, uh, obviously. Now, as soon as you add an effect to it, always look at your time, timeline because it'll add keyframes to it. So, uh, here it is. Here's the effect. And that's, uh, basically what we wanted. Or is that what, if that's what you wanted. Now, you can also then change how that looks. So if this is too close to the screen, and then you have full control by uh, moving it back a bit. So if now if we uh, play it, okay. So it's uh, it kind of just went to the screen. So but it's okay because this one also went large. So I'm just going to move that back a bit as well so it fits better into the screen. So as you can see, I'm just working with the keyframes. So let's play, and that looks better now. Okay, so see how easy it is? Just uh, look at the keyframes and then change it accordingly. 
Now, you, you can also move the timeline on the keyframes, like so. So, uh, you've got the very easy for, uh, easy control on the words. There we go. And then it goes back. So, there. Very simple. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, but uh, <clears throat> let's uh, let's create another file and uh, let's do something different again. Uh, I'm always using the word test. Let's use my name, Chris. Well, first we're going to resize it. Okay, so what can we do here? Well, if I uh, grab my rotate tool and I spin it around, and I can see uh, the thickness here, and this is by default 100. Uh, if I want to change it to make it thicker or, uh, or thinner, uh, I go onto my bevel tab and then my extrusion is 100, so I wish it to be thicker, let's say 300. And if I press enter, you'll see immediately how thick it became. So you have the uh, full control on the thickness of your, your words as well. That's good, obviously. And transparency, I mean, that's self explanatory. If I move this, it uh, basically disappears. And then, and if you want, obviously, that can be a cool effect. If I move it to my last keyframe, I add in a keyframe. Sorry about that, I should have explained. These are your keyframe inserts, jumps to, uh, remove keyframe, and so forth. It's very similar again to uh, the uh, keyframe tutorial I did. So, if this is my last keyframe, I can make it so that my word disappears. So let's have a look. And then it just slowly fades away. So it's not rocket science, is it? It's quite easy to use and do. And like I said, it's heavily dependent on keyframes. And once you learn that, uh, you're good to go. And I think, like I mentioned uh, previous, this probably would only require, I would say, five or six tutorials. And then you are well on your way to create your own designs and effects because it's uh, it is basically self-explanatory of how it works. Now right, let's do uh, one more thing. Uh, particle effects. All right, so uh, global effects. So if I press on global effects, you're going to get some really cool things. So now that I have my work created, maybe I want to um, put it in spotlight. So I'm going to. I'm going to basically uh, move it up a little and I'm going to put it in spotlights. So I'm going to go spotlights and then I'll go through the one that I like the most. Mm, let's see, I like this effect here. So now, looks like I'm awesome. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> so there you go. Alright. All right, now, uh, one more thing, actually, I should have mentioned this before. It's got a black background, so I can change that black background as well. But I don't want the black. Let's say I want to go for something else. What you, all you need to do is, it doesn't really matter which tab you uh, choose. If you go into the attribute panel and you drop down menu, they're all whatever is here is here anyway. So, um, so here's your background, and then you can change it. So now I've got colors and so forth. Um, but uh, I can do one better than that. Why don't I just, uh, uh, sorry, uh, if I go to backgrounds, which I am obviously, uh, like this. bear with me for a second, here we go, sorry, image, I can import my own image, so now I have my own image on my background rather than using just a standard black or white or whatever color it is that I want. There we go. Oh my words disappeared. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that uh, transparency back out. I, I could just delete the keyframe, couldn't I? So, so there you go, my friends. As you can see, it's uh, really, really easy to use. Uh, let's just add a little effect in here, and then I'll export it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's make a corner. Let's do that. Right, so now that I'm done, uh, I can save it if I wish. 
but I don't. I just want to export it into my video studio and then work with it. And these are the three things you probably work with the most. The export video to overlay. If you click this, you're going to lose your background and it'll go back to black because you've got it's on the assumption that you're going to uh, mask and chroma key it out. So there's a little tip for you. Just go export video, name it whatever you want, and then go ah, ah, like, ah, and then save, and then it'll just automatically launch your Corel video and have it into your timeline already. And there it is. It may need some rendering, I'm not sure. Yeah, obviously, it needs to render in because I got the smart proxy on, so uh, it's probably storing it. But, uh, Fear not, obviously it will uh, it will definitely uh, be smoother because uh, if I create the file and I save the file, you'll see that it does run, uh, run nice and smooth. Am I really going to make you sit here and watch this? You know what? Uh, it doesn't matter. You understand the basics of it. It'll do that in a second. So there it is, my friends. It's very very easy to uh, to change the fonts. Uh, the style and the backdrops and so forth. So hopefully this will be enough to get you moving on your first text and then and use it onto your timeline. And as always, thanks for watching.